Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our time of evening prayer today on Friday, the 23rd of July. I hope you're all keeping well in this heat wave that continues, which is glorious weather. Um, but I hope you'll forgive me for my attire for that exact reason where I think I will melt if I put a collar on um, in this basking heat this afternoon. But back to our evening prayer. Today on the 23rd of July, the church celebrates the life and witness of St. Bridget of Sweden. Now, Bridget's father was governor of Upland when she was born in the year about her 1303. And she married at the age of 14 and had eight children and often attended the royal court, where she continued to experience these mystical revelations that she'd known and had since she was a child. They increased in intensity after her husband's death, and three years later, she responded by founding a monastery for nuns and monks at Vastenna in 1346. Bridget's, Bridget's daughter Catherine was the first abbess of the so-called Bridgetine Order, which became very influential in Northern Europe. After travelling to Rome to obtain the Pope's approval for her plans, Bridget never actually returned to Sweden, but she spent the rest of her life as a pilgrim, an advisor to rulers and church leaders, and a minister to everybody in need. Her revelations were recorded by her confessors before her death, which occurred on this day in the year 1373. So it's today the church celebrates the life and witness of St. Bridget of Sweden. And we begin our time of evening prayer with our prayers of preparation. O God, make speeds to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, Dispel the darkness of our hearts that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts, to set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm number 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my salvation from the words of my distress? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. And by night also, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forebears trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying... He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delights in him. But it is you that took me out of the womb and laid me safe upon my mother's breast. On you was I cast ever since I was born. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. Be not far from me. My trouble is near at hand and there is none to help. Mighty oxen come around me. Fat bulls of Bashan close me in on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths, as it, it, as it were a ramping and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart has become like wax, melting in the depths of my body. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue cleaves to my gums. You have laid me in the dust of death. For the hounds are all about me, the pack of evildoers close in on me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stand staring and looking at me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far from me, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my poor life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. I will tell of your name to my people. In the midst of the congregation will I praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. O seed of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, O seed of Israel. 
but he has not despised nor abhorred the suffering of the poor, neither has he hidden his face from them. But when they cried to him, he heard them. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. I will perform my vows in the presence of those that fear you. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. Their hearts shall live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow down before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. How can those who sleep in the earth bow down in worship? Or those who go down to the dust kneel before him? He has saved my life for himself. My descendants shall serve him. This shall be told of the Lord for generations to come. They shall come and make known his salvation to a people yet unborn, declaring that he, the Lord, has done it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 5 through 18. The Philistines mustered to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen, and troops like the sand on the seashore in multitude. They came and encamped at Michmash, to the east of beth Aven. When the Israelites saw that they were in distress, for the troops were hard-pressed, the people hid themselves in caves and holes and in rocks and in tombs and in cisterns. Some Hebrews crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul was still at Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. He waited for seven days, the time appointed by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people began to slip away from Saul. So Saul said, bring the burnt offering here to me and the offerings of well-being. And he offered the burnt offerings. As soon as he had finished offering the burnt offerings, Samuel arrived. And Saul went out to meet him and salute him. Samuel said, what have you done? Saul replied, when I saw the people were slipping away from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines were mustering at Michmash, I said, now the Philistines will come down upon me at Gilgal, and I have not entreated the favour of the Lord. So I forced myself and offered the burnt offering. Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. The Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever, but now your kingdom will not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, and the Lord has appointed him to be ruler over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. And Samuel left and went on his way from Gilgal. The rest of the people followed Saul to join the army. They went up from Gilgal towards Gibeah of Benjamin. Saul counted the people who were present with him, about 600 men. Saul, his son Jonathan, and the people who were present with him stayed in Geba of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped at Michmash, and raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned towards Ophrah, to the land of Shual, uh, Shual. another company toward, towards Beth Horon, and another company turned towards the mountains that looked down upon the valley of Zeboim, towards the wilderness. Here ends our first lesson, and our canticle, A Song of the Justified. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exalt in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us, God proves his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exalt in God through our Lord Jesus Christ in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. 
Our second lesson is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 22, verses 63 to the end. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to the council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All, asked, all of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am? Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Here ends our second lesson and our responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And the Magnificat. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. And so, in the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We pray to the Lord, in faith we pray. We pray to you, our God that the rest of this day may be holy, peaceful, and full of your presence. We pray to you, in faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that the work we have done and the people we have met today may bring us closer to you. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that we may hear and respond to your call to peace and justice. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that you will sustain the faith and hope of those who are lonely, oppressed and anxious. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God, that you will strengthen us in your service and fill our hearts with longing for your kingdom. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. In our worldwide calendar of prayer today, we pray for the Diocese of Davao in the Episcopal Church in the Philippines. And in our own diocesan calendar of prayer, we continue this month to pray for the Karenion Mission Area and for Jane James, their Mission Area Leader. We pray for Archdeacon Barry, Archdeacon of Montgomery, and for Bishop Gregory, and for all his ministry for and among us. We continue to pray for those developing, producing and rolling out the vaccine for Colin and all people in nursing and residential homes, for Daniel and all those in prison, and for their families. We pray for Jane and the chaplaincy team at the Myla Hospital, and for Alan and the chaplaincy team at HMP Berwyn. We remember before God in our hearts those people known to us at this time in need of our prayers, those who have asked us to pray for them, and those who have nobody to pray for them. As we remember before God, Richard, Louise, Derek, Malcolm, Gordon, James, Anne, Nancy, Harry, Dot, Chris, Peter, 
Joshua, Jean, Janet, Bob, Joe, and Tessa. We pray for those who find themselves bereaved at this time. For Phyllis Meredith's family, Jan Marie Maggs and her family, and for Wayne's family, whose funeral was today at St Giles. And we pray for our dearly loved ones who have departed this world and now find their eternal rest with God our Father. As we remember Phyllis Meredith, Andy Maggs and Wayne. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And our colleague for today. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is.